Hey, what's up everybody? This is Beers for Build. Welcome to another episode. I'm Chris. I will be your host guiding you through this journey of just jackassery. In this episode, we are going to be fabricating a new front impact bar for our Lotus. Let's get to it. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started on the fun stuff and fabricating new stuff, I gotta finish the teardown. And to do that, I gotta remove these brackets. There's one on each side. They hold a big square piece, or you bolt onto these a big square piece that comes out like this. And it, at the bottom of that square piece, it actually bolts onto the under tray. And on the other side, that square piece holds auxiliary things like the windshield wiper fluid reservoir and the oil cooler. On this side, I'm not sure, I don't think it held much. I think it was just a structural piece. Anyways, these are both toasts on both sides, so we're gonna drill them out and then we'll refabricate the brackets onto our new slip cover once we get that on there. So uh, these are really, really heavy duty rivets. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna get the hard part out of the way first and bust through this. All right, we got those brackets off of the frame rail without too much trouble. I went ahead and took the, the orange epoxy stuff, uh, bonding material off as well, ground that down. So there's two on that one and there's two on the bottom of this one. Um, and then there was just two on the side of this one. So that's all done and now we're ready to build our slip covers. I'm going to use this piece that we cut off as our template for the slip cover. So I'll build from one side and then I'll build from the other side uh, so I can have a mirrored one. And uh, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure how I want to go about this, but I'm just going to grab the metal stock that we have and start building. I feel like we're at a good spot to take a break and uh, talk to you guys about what we've got done so far. So I have a bottom plate that's going across, it comes up to this top lip here. And I did a, uh, what is that, a 90 degree angle? 90 degree, it's come up and cover the bottom of the frame rail. And then this is the hard piece, it's like a side piece that slips on the inside of it and it's hard because it's got this lip right here, or this like channel. So I cut that piece out of our top piece and I cut a, a piece of square bar in half. And so I'm just lightly tacking these things on here. And then the so next piece is the top piece that comes over. And then we have this real hardcore um, one inch pipe to cover this rail. But I'll probably do that later once we're like 100% sure everything goes on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the top piece um, on here. To do that, I have to cut these things out so I can get a, a better like lay measurement. But then uh, I'll throw that top piece on and we'll go ahead and test fit it on the car. All right, well this came out pretty good. It slid on nicely and it's a good snug fit. So the last couple pieces there are is I need to use that square bar to get over to this side, that one inch square bar, and then I need to weld the face plate on. So basically I don't have uh, the clamps that I need at the shop. So I'm going to have to call it a night tonight, go buy some tomorrow. It's really rare that we run out of parts, but it did happen today, or tools, we don't have the tools. Um, I need clamps that are this big to clamp it here and clamp it here to get the right amount. And then I can slap our faceplate on here. But it does fit perfectly, so that is the good sign that we're looking for. Excuse me. That's a good sign that we're looking for, is this is perfectly square and fits our faceplate. So um, I could have used a couple more Magnet 45s and stuff like that before I build the other one. So I'm going to call it a night and I'll come back tomorrow with more supplies, more tools, and we will make up the other side. All right, what's up guys, we're back. So yesterday I said that we were gonna go ahead and finish the front of this thing. Uh, I got all the tools that I need, but then I actually decided when I showed up today in the shop that I'd rather do both sides of the frame rail extensions and then do the caps, do all the on the car work 
um, all at once. So I'm actually gonna go back over to uh, the working bench over there and build the driver's side frame rail extension. All right, so on the last one, we were working with it facing this way, and that's what generated our frame rail for the passenger side. So now it's pretty simple. We just flip it around like this and uh, build to this, and that will be our frame rail for the driver's side. I'm gonna go ahead and do it a little bit differently this time though. I'm gonna do the hard part first, cutting the channel out. Uh, cutting the channel out and building this piece. That's the part I'm gonna do first and then I'll do the sides and the top. Okay, the stressful part is complete. Uh, both of these fit on here and they fit well. So uh, <laughs> that's the good part. That's the, that was the hard part done. So now we just need to button it up. So we got these plates that need to go on the front and then we need to build some sort of a thing that can go over this little rail lip. And then right here, we have an option. Like we could weld in something that covers right here or we could uh, go over top of it the whole way. So I'm not really sure. It's gonna be really hard to cut that one inch square bar to that size the whole way around and cut it straight. So I don't know, that'll be tricky. But first off, I wanna go ahead and uh, weld in these end caps. So I'm gonna, uh, I got this like clamped up here nicely and that's where it needs to sit. So then I need to uh, clamp this down a little bit, squeeze it in just a little bit and then find a way to get this thing to sit on here correctly in the right spot. I don't have any like magnets that have like inverse 90 degrees. But I'll figure it out. Maybe I can use two magnets or something. Uh, anyways, and then we're gonna get that to sit on there and we'll tack it all together on both sides. All right, for the last piece of this, we need to uh, close out this upper railing. So what I did was I channeled out a piece of one inch square uh, bar. Uh, I, I ran out of the store and bought one that's a little bit thinner gauge. Mine that I had was too thick a gauge. Uh, so this slides right over here like this. We've cut it to the right length and uh, it lays flush with the back side and then overlaps on this front side. So we will tack this in here and then that leaves us enough room to run our cooling hose where it went uh, before. First, before I do that though, I need to come in here and clean all this up. There's a little bit of slag everywhere and we don't want to weld on top of slag. So I'm going to come in, clean this part up, clean this part up, and then we'll tack this into place. And that will finish off this railing. All right, our first rail is complete. It's nice and snug and it's on there. So uh, what's gonna happen with this is I'm gonna send them off to Eric and then Eric is gonna clean them up and do all the full welding on it since Eric is a professional certified aerospace welder. Just wanted to talk, there's a lot of comments about um, uh, dissimilar metal corrosion. Uh, we're gonna use the uh, this um, uh, orange bonding stuff that you see right in here. Well, that's not a very good shot. The stuff right here, that'll that'll act as a buffer, but also there's not a lot of water to can like uh, accelerate that that process, and it takes a very 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 long time, longer than the life of this car or probably anybody watching this video uh, to actually really weaken that. So we're not going to worry about that at all. And other people had talked about, you know, well, you guys are doing this wrong. Lotus built it to crash and like it's supposed to bend. This stuff will absolutely bend. It, it's not, this isn't bulletproof metal, you know, it's going to bend in the event of an accident. I think it's a really good gauge. You know, don't forget guys, I've spent years and years and years walking around yards and looking at wrecked cars and looking at how cars wrecked. Lotus expected their front crash structure to accordion in. They expected it to just have these perfect wrinkles. I've seen a picture of one that was through, went through a crash test. They expected it to just all have this perfect wrinkles. And honestly, all the ones that I've seen that wrecked in the real world, one of the arms just ripped off. That's probably why this car ended up rolling 
um, rather than getting in a front end wreck because that arm ripped off, which then probably shot that wheel over something. I don't know. Anyways, so I like steel because steel bends and this aluminum is just, you know, my opinion, it's not very good uh, to build a crash structure out of. So I'm actually very happy that we're building this out of this. But also uh, I did realize, you know, since we're not going to be running airbags at the start at least, uh, the, they're very hard to get a hold of from Lotus and I don't know how to reprogram our airbag system. We're going to be running a four point harness as well. So we'll have this crash structure in the front, but then we'll also have the four point harness in our seats and we'll do a roll bar, we'll do a harness bar install in the back. We'll fabricate one of those up and we'll do that uh, before we call this build done. So, which I think that'll be cool. That'll have a nice effect to it. Okay, so that one's all wrapped up. It's time to go throw the other one on and do the same stuff. We'll start with the front cap and then we'll build the railing. All right, well this one is done, still a little toasty. I had to really space out the tack weld so I didn't get this thing uh, too hot because we don't want to risk screwing up any of the glue underneath it with the aluminum, but the aluminum is still nice and cold. So this came out, this came out. I ran some bars across and everything's looking square. I'm actually, it's probably not a big deal for a lot of people out there that fabricate stuff all the time, but uh, for me, this is a big deal because it's the first time I've really tried to fabricate anything, have it all come out like perfectly square and down to the measurements and everything and uh, it came out great. So I'm very, very happy with the way that this came out. So like I said, um, that's it. We take these now uh, over to Eric where Eric's gonna weld them up. All right guys, that wraps up fabrication for us this weekend on our new front crash structure. After these go off to Eric to be all welded up nicely, they will come back and then we will mount our crash bar across the front, which is a two and a half inch wide uh, bar, two and a half inch outer diameter bar. And that will go right across here, finishing that out. We have to measure and mount that very, very carefully because off of that comes a mounting bracket that we mount the front clamshell to and the bumper to. So good stuff to come with this. And a lot of things are gonna be built off of this as well, like the radiator mounts and stuff like that. So very exciting. And we're all just working close, we're, we're working towards getting this car on the road to do a little test drive before we throw all the body on. I think it'd be good to do a shakedown without all the body work on it in case, you know, we have a line in the side rails or something that gets covered by the body parts. We can't really fix those after we put the new side panels on. So I'm really excited. I definitely want to take this thing out for a spin and that's what we're working directly towards. We're just doing the minimum things that we can to get this thing out and on the road to give it a, a little shakedown, which will be very exciting. If you like BS for Build and what we're doing here, head over to bsforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop. At the shop, there's things like t-shirts, there's hats, there's key tags. All the proceeds of those things go directly towards supporting this build. And thank you guys all so much that have already supported. This sport has been awesome. If you want to have more of our stuff, of our things, if you want to be more connected, head over to facebook.com slash BS for Build and BS for Build on Instagram. I think that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button. And as always, subscribe. Peace. Come on.